Hi, my Facebook people. Hi, my Get Real members. I'm so glad to see you today. I am in a state of being um, kind of excited and pumped up, and I know that's kind of not the, the general um, attitude of everyone out there in the world right now, but hopefully I'm gonna say some things that can bring um, some positivity to your thinking and help you to um, create kind of an action plan and give you something to look forward to. Um, that's really what I wanted to talk about. You know, I, I said this was an industry reopening um, episode because I know that everybody's been looking at all this stuff on Facebook and all these links to these different news articles about how Atlanta was going to reopen or how Florida was going to reopen or how LA was, was handling things in New York. And a, a lot of it is very discouraging. I won't even say it's not. Um, there is so many people that are, you know, they open things up too fast and now it's going backwards and it's and it's shutting down again. And we've heard things about um, Broadway saying the rest of the year is canceled and um, Cirque du Soleil is, is filing for bankruptcy. So these things that are going on and that are happening around, um, they're real and it's true. And we all need to be very diligent about what we're gonna do about it. We are our product. If we're talent, if we're a model, if we're an actor and we are what we have to sell, we have to take care of ourselves. Now, amidst everything that's going on, I highly recommend that you do what you can to stay home as much as possible. If you don't, this industry will not open up as fast as it should. So although people are talking about, you know, whether or not it's your right to wear a mask or not wear a mask, I mean, hey people, we are supposed to wear shirts, right? So not that I wanna grab sides on any kind of issues, I really don't. I'm just talking about what's best for you. I'm talking about what's best for um, the industry itself. The only way to safeguard whether these things are true or whether they're false or whatever anybody believes if it's all, all a rumor and it's not real, whether, whether or not you believe that, our business has been primarily shut down. Shut down, done. Not much we can do about it, except try to get well, stay home. So um, the more that we think about that, the more that we you know, wanna move forward, the more that we are, are thinking about, what, how do I do this? How do I plan this? What, what do I do? Um, I've been saying to people for months, yeah, months. I've been saying to people for months that this is a perfect opportunity to start working on yourself, to hone your craft, to build who you are as a commodity, as a, as a talent, as um, something that should be marketable. So, you know, putting your marketing materials together is a perfect time for taking that kind of time to do this. And I've said this before in my, in my webinars. So I wanted to kind of spin this a little bit differently because um, I personally, have been doing the same thing. Most everybody that knows me knows that I really enjoy um, my own knowledge. I, I like to build my own self. So I study a lot of life coaching things and I, I pay attention to um, lots of webinars and I'm, I'm doing it too because I figure if I'm to help you to the best of my ability, then I need to be at my very best as well. So I've been paying attention to these things. And um, this past week, I was doing an Anthony Robbins thing and everybody knows that I, I love Anthony Robbins and I studied his life coaching methods and all that kind of thing. So I've been doing that, um, watching his webinars and, and it's you know hours of time that I've spent towards this. And in doing so, someone, someone made a quote and it was the woman who, who started Spanx. Um, she said, I will not squander my opportunities. And I found that to be a really powerful statement because when we spend time, time is spent. We can't get it back again. So we need to not squander our opportunities. Well, I was thinking about this as it applies to me because as it applies to me, it applies to all of my people. It applies to my students. It applies to my assigned talent. Um, it, it kind of bleeds over. So when I think about not squandering my opportunities, well, what are my opportunities right now? What are things that I could be doing to help this industry grow? What can I be doing to help the talent pools grow, um, what can I be doing that would be an opportunity for me to make opportunity for others? So that was one of the things that crossed my mind. Um, and, and it became kind of important to me. So I wanted to 
design something. I wanted to do something a little bit differently. And another thing that came up in that same webinar was it said, fall in love with your client. And I, I consider my clients to be not just the talent, but you know, also the people that hire the talent. They're all kind of what they were talking about as the client, not really my product, but my client. And when I think about that, and I, I do fall in love with my clients. I do fall in love with my talent. I do fall in love with my sign talent. I do fall in love with my students. I love them all. Um, creative people, the storytellers, the ones who are out there who are trying to make art and share it with the rest of the world. I love those kind of people. I find them fascinating. I find them amazing and, and always something new and unique and beautiful. So I am in love with the creatives. I am in love with the storytellers. So with that in mind and how much I am deeply passionate and everybody always says, well, you're really passionate. And it's like, yes, I am really passionate. How deeply passionate I am about helping talent and helping them to do better. I've kind of thought about the industry as a whole. And I know some of you have watched my, my first episode of, of Get Real um, a while back now. It was, it was a while ago when I did that and I called it um, Avoiding the Pitchfall. And one of the things that I, I started to pay attention to is, is the cycle of what's going on out there to talent. And it's still happening, even, even over webcams and even though everybody can't meet at hotels and, and go to these big casting call things. Oops. I bought my tripod <laughs> and do these big casting call things. This stuff is still happening. It's just happening by webcam. And, and what I'm talking about that has ca caused a genuine um, downflux of this business, uh, even on top of COVID-19, um, there's a whole spiral. It's a downward spiral that's going on within the industry. And I want to do something about it because I think I have it in my power to do something about it. Um, the way it starts, and everyone's seen this, or they know somebody who has, the way it starts is there's a post. There's a post on Facebook. There's a post somewhere, and it's an advertisement saying that they're looking for talent. They're looking for talent of all ages. It's usually geared towards teens, but they're looking for talent. And they want the talent to all gather kind of at the same time, and they're going to talk to you about um, whether or not you're going to be chosen to work with this company. So. These big companies come in, they put up these, this advertising, they gather all these people and these hopeful, hopeful people go to these things and they realize that it's what I call the pitchfall. It ends up in a sales pitch. Now, two things happen with the sales pitch. One thing that happens to parents is that they end up feeling very pressured. Um, they end up feeling very worried about it. They, they, they are worried that they're not going to do the best they can for their hopeful child or their, their teen. You know, they, they worry about if it's for themselves. They feel like they, they need to do this, that they are going to miss the boat. That fear of missing out thing. So they go through this whole emotional thing based on this sales pitch trying to get people to buy coaching. Now, that's okay. Coaching is okay. And this is where this all gets screwed up is okay, so we've got people out there that are being pressured by a sales pitch to get into coaching. And some of them go and do it, and some of them feel really good about it, but there's there's two ways that this happens. So um, if you guys have my PDF, you'll see what, what I'm, you'll follow along with me. So hopeful talent comes in. Hopeful talent is told they need coaching. Everybody does need coaching. It's important that everybody does need coaching. Where the system becomes flawed is, okay, so then they now overcharge for coaching from people who are underqualified to coach. And then there's two types of people, one that, one that signs on for this program and the other one that doesn't. Now, okay, here's our two eventual outcomes. The one that signs on for the program and takes the subpar coaching, goes to a big event and a, and a, and a talent um, showcase, doesn't do well because they're improperly coached. And then they put them back through the same thing and tell them, well, they need more coaching and they resell these same people. So they get into this mill of spending a lot of money and hopefully they get better just by, you know, trying to do this. So a lot of people are aware that those companies are out there and they're charging thousands of dollars for coaching thousands and thousands and then it's not even good, and then they have to do it again and pay them thousands of dollars. So, okay, that's going on out there. Now, the other person 
who couldn't afford to do this, who now feels absolutely terrible about it, in order to make themselves feel better that they couldn't do this and couldn't afford this for their kids, even though they don't know whether it was good or not, they post something on Facebook and say that, that they just were part, they just dodged a scam and this is a scam. And that's what, but then all of a sudden they start throwing out the word scam, right? So that's what the person who didn't do it does. But now they don't know what to do anyway. They assume that all of the companies are scams. They, they're stuck. They're absolutely, totally stuck with nothing they can do to make their career move forward. So um, people then decide, okay, well, maybe it's not necessary. Maybe none of it's necessary. Maybe we don't do coaching at all. I'll go do some indie films. I'll take some pictures with my photographer friend, and this is how I'm gonna get into the industry. So, okay, that's a plan. Makes you feel like you're moving ahead, but nobody's teaching you anything about how to be the actor, how to be the model, and now it could take you years and years and years to actually develop your skill by trial and error. Now we all know that youth is a benefit in this business. So now you're wasting your youth trying to learn how to do the job that you're already on set for and possibly burning bridges because you're not up to par. So now what? The person who did this fall for the pitchfall isn't much further ahead. The person who didn't do this is chugging along at a snail's pace and everybody's stuck. Now, this is what's been going on for a very, very long time. Everybody being stuck because they don't know what to do. Now, a lot of companies, they don't even tell people how to get a job after they've been trained. So nobody knows what to do then either. They're kind of like dead in the water. Everybody's stuck. So now everyone tries to do it themselves. Now it's a do it yourself or thing. Now it's all everybody's freelance. I'm gonna go on to um, backstage and I'm gonna go on to um, whatever casting things I can find and I'm gonna pay them and I'm gonna have casting profiles all over the place and I'm gonna try and do this myself. And that's what people do because now they lo no longer trust anybody that says agent. Because if they trust an agent, that agent might be just like that other thing that was called the scam, right? I actually had somebody this past week that didn't want to fill out the paperwork to get paid when I'd hired her. She'd gone to a shoot. She was supposed to get paid. I give her a voucher so we have it on paper that she should get paid. And she didn't want to sign the paper to get paid. They're so leery out there, they won't even give the paperwork to someone who's trying to collect their pay who already gave them a job. She was leaving the set and she wouldn't sign the papers. But I'm glad I have a client that I can trust who's still gonna pay, pay her fees anyway. I'm not gonna question whether or not she was there on me. They're gonna be really nice and understanding and they're going to send her pay to me so that I can pay her. But that doesn't always happen. You gotta cover your hiney so that people actually know you were there. So that's how, that's how much people don't trust the industry. They don't even trust us when we've already given you a job. And that's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. So if that's going on, and this whole distrust thing is going on, what does that do to the agent's job? Well, let me explain this to you. Okay, so everybody wants to freelance now. Everybody goes on to you know, this website or that website or whatever. And I'm an agent and I have a weird casting to fill. Like I, I just had a weird casting to fill. I needed people with dogs. And then the one before that was weird because I needed people who were co-isolating um, co-isolating in Orlando. So sometimes I get these really specific castings. So, okay, I'll give the casting websites a try and do a post and do a casting notice and, and do the search and everything else. And then I get a whole bunch of people who are not professional level because they have no idea what that means. They don't answer the questions that they're supposed to answer on the casting calls. They don't um, provide the right information. They have pictures of themselves up with, with sunglasses on so I can't see their, their face. So there's all this stuff. Hi, Cynthia. <laughs> um, so there's all this stuff going on that makes it more and more difficult for someone like me to weed through the people that apply. One casting, I had 100 people apply to me and really one of them answer, asked the, answered the questions correctly. 
it's so much effort and so much work to try and go through everything that's on those websites that's not qualified talent, that is subpar, and hope that you can find somebody in time when our deadlines are like 24 to 48 out. It's not easy. So yes, we're scrambling to find good talent. Yes, we're trying to figure out whether or not they know what they're doing. We're trying to find out if they're, if they're gonna be pleasant even. And it's so difficult. It's so much more difficult these days because you don't know if they've actually been told basic protocols of this business and whether or not they're going to be a nightmare or whether or not they're going to cancel on you even though they've already said, yes, I will do this job. I had nine roles to fill of people with their pets. And every time I filled one, somebody backed out. They tried to negotiate the pay. The pay's already there. You've already said you would do this. You know what the pay is. Why would you try and negotiate it after you already said you could do it? And I'd gone and told the client you could do it. That's not the time to do that. So I end up in situations like that that suck up more of my time trying to weed through these people who aren't going to be committed, who aren't going to be dependable, who aren't going to be professional. So that sucks up more of my time and it takes me at least twice as long to try and find the right people to fill the role. So when it takes me twice as long to find the right people to fill the role, then I'm not out there trying to make more doors open for my talent because I don't have the time. So see how that makes the industry go down again. I'm not able to go out there and find the talent. So as that's happening to me, then the production companies then feel like, oh, something's wrong with the agency. Nothing's wrong with the agency, something's wrong with the talent because the talent aren't properly prepared and they're not properly trained, but they're all over the place and they're sucking up the agent's time. What are we gonna do? Okay, this is, this is where my epiphany comes in. Okay, what are we gonna do? If we've got subpar talent out there, we've got an industry that's flooded with non-professionals, it's all over the internet, everybody on Instagram is a, is a model, so it's crazy. Oh, somebody was trying to, uh, message me and actually it was somebody I just wanted to talk about. So that's so cool. Okay. So all of that is going on and, and we need some way to change this. This needs to be a shift in what's going on. And I think there's some basic elements here that need shifting. If we look at this logically, the shift needs to come from one at a company level, the coaches. The coaches that are out there, everyone that I talk to eventually comes to a realization that coaching will help. It will help. Now, some of it you can find free online and some of it is, is, is scratching the surface for free, but then they you know upsell you because they can and because they should, because everybody needs to get paid and everybody needs to eat and that's okay. So you learn a little bit for free, sure. If you really, really want to be good, you need to pay people that will coach you because they're, they're quality controlling and making sure that you actually grow and learn and develop and become a good talent so that you can get jobs, so that you can get repeat business, so that you can get more and more work and build your resume and get bigger jobs. That's the point. So yes, you do need the coaching, but you need the quality coaching. So if these major, major companies are all across the United States, and some other other countries as well. If they're all over the place and they're filling their classrooms with people and not providing quality coaching, then why can't quality coaching be filling rooms with people who wanna be talent? Imagine the shift in what would happen if large amounts of people are being professionally quality coached and then put into the job market. Well, Cool, okay, so now they're put into the job market. Now the agencies that want professional talent are willing to sign them when they're still new to the industry, when they're not so many years down the line. Now your pay rate's gonna go up because what happens is the people that really appreciate the work that the agency does are the people that actually have a budget to pay the agency. So the freelancers who are getting, you know, scraps here and there and scraps here and there will suddenly get actual paying jobs. So quality talent builds the quality of the agency. 
the quality of the agency will provide quality work to the production companies, to the um, print jobs, to the runway jobs when that all starts up again. That's what would happen. Now, when that happens, the value of professional people goes up. Does that make sense? A whole bunch of people out there running around on, on runways that they're either paying to be on or getting a little bit of pay. No, no. If your quality goes up, your pay will go up. So, there's a thought. When people notice the difference, they'll continue coming to an agency who can then get you more jobs. So we see how, okay, let's eliminate the problems here. But one of the problems is improper coaching. That needs to be eliminated from the equation. It should, it should never be um, paid to someone who hasn't worked a day in their life in the industry. You should be paying people who know how to coach. Now, I used to hire coaches, and when I had to hire coaches, I would find people who had worked in the industry, but they didn't know how to coach either because they weren't comfortable with telling people what was wrong or what needed to be said or, or how to adjust this or that or um, how do you have a new idea or how to put the fear aside. All of those things that need to be done to actually coach somebody and not damage their self-esteem. A lot of people are very, very scared to do that. They don't understand how to do that. They don't know what kind of process goes into the thinking to be a good coach. So it's not easy to find a good coach, but we need more of them. And we need them at an affordable cost, and we need them when it's not a nasty sales pitch. That's what we need so that people don't shy away from getting what they truly require in order to do well. So this is what I have decided I'm doing, going to do so that it can all trickle down, so that it all gets better, so that it grows and expands and ends up across the country in a higher level of quality. This is what I'm going to do. Um, most of you know that I have been doing online coaching myself and that I've been doing you know, this, this Get Real program where I'm offering a three month membership and, and you get on twice a week and talk to me and work with me and, and learn. And I've been doing that and loving it and loving it. And my people have been loving it and they've been telling me that they're happy and, and it makes me happy and they're gonna continue to do more things with me. But um, when I'm just me, and yes, I could put you know a hundred people on my on my Zoom camera or you know my meetings. But if I do that, then you're not able to do a script or you're not able to walk and have me see you if there's hundreds of people in there. So I can't logically do it all myself and create quality talent that's going to get booked by all sorts of different agencies and different markets. I can't do it all by myself. So I know I need other coaches. I need other people to be quality coaches and to be ethical coaches. So what I'm going to do, hi, Oriana, I love you. I miss you. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do is I have talked with um, a video production company and they really want to do something that's, that's fashion and, um, and acting related. They really want to partner with me. And I have decided that I am going to put together a coaching program to coach coaches. I want to coach the coaches and teach them ethical business practices to find talent and to help them to feel comfortable with their coach. And then teach them how to find the opportunities for them once they've started their coaching and started to progress. So I want to teach these people what I have been doing myself and help it spread. And that way the quality level will rise up and then our, our pay can rise up. That's what all makes sense. So if that's what I'm gonna do, if I'm gonna coach the coaches, what do I need to do to do that other than a video guy? Well, if I'm gonna coach coaches to coach talent, then I need to know who the talent is that's going to be in the coaching program, right? Make sense? I need example talent. Now, I can't go into all of my talent base and say, hey, 
I need example talents to show the transformations and to say, you know, okay, if you were coaching this person, what would you say to them? What would you advise them to do? I can't do that if there are people that are already really well coached. I need people who are green. I need people who are bottom beginner level. That's what I need to be able to show a transformation. Now, that shouldn't seem like it's so hard to find, right? I just said that there's a whole bunch of people like that, but um, they have to be willing. They have to be willing to attend coaching, be videoed in the coaching process, and have that video shared with those who then want to learn how to coach. So it's a little deeper than that. You know, it's almost like I'm casting students, which I kind of am. Now, what I was thinking is, okay, normally I pay people to, I, people pay me to coach them. Um, so I normally wouldn't have to pay a talent to appear in my coaching because they'd be getting coaching. So how to make this a win-win? Okay, this is what I've done. Um, I have put together a page on my Five Star Talent and Productions site. My Five Star Talent and Productions is my coaching company. Um, Five Star Talent and Productions.net is my coaching site. What I have done on there is um, underneath services, it has um, the Get Real program, and now it says Get Real Submissions. And what I want you to do is I want you to spread this around. Um, if someone would like, I'm going to pick five models. I'm going to pick five actors. And if someone would like to be a part of this, they need to apply on the website to be put into the processes of being chosen as someone who would be in my videos to train the trainers. For this, I will give them a $2,000 or $200 scholarship. I almost said the wrong thing. It's $200 scholarship. So essentially, um, I am giving away $2,000. I'm starting with the models. I need models first. So if you know someone who was discouraged, if you know someone who thought they couldn't do this, if you know someone that went, you know, the, the training companies are too expensive, if you know someone who had that happen to them and they got stuck and they got dead in the water and they didn't know what to do, no, I can't give away all my knowledge to somebody for free. I can't do that because that, that would then spread it around there and, and devalue it. And that makes it so that um, it's impossible. You know, if, if then somebody else will go share it with their friends and then I have nothing to teach and, and then it's no value whatsoever. Um, I'm COVID-19, two people in my industry was shut down. So I still have to feed my kids and I'm sure you understand that. But I have my two coaching programs. My coaching programs are a three month thing and I charge $675, and I usually break that into three payments. But if you want to apply to be somebody that I would use to coach my coaches, I would give you a $200 scholarship off of that, which means essentially you do two payments and the last one is gone. So um, that is three months of training for $475. It's a really, really good offer. Um, and it's only going to be to five models and five actors who are on a beginning level. I need that. And I want you to be someone also who has some sort of social media following so that you can tell people what you're doing, let them see what you're doing, explain it to them, um, go, hey, look what happened to me, look what, how I look now, um, look at how good I am at this monologue, or look how good I am at this at this runway walk. I want that kind of a thing to happen with, with this energy. Um, I'm trying to build up some people that may not have had a chance before because they couldn't spend $1,500 on coaching. So that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm trying to get. I want to help people. I want to help the industry. I want to help everything grow. I want to help the quality of talents to rise up in a mass scale so that our pay rates can rise up in a mass scale so that nobody is going to say to you anymore, won't you do that for free? No, I don't want to work for free. You don't want to work for free. Nobody wants to work for free. Yes, it's a fun job. I know it's a fun job. Everybody loves modeling. Everybody loves acting. It's a fun job, but you want to be paid. You want to be paid. I get 20%. I want to be paid. 
this is a way we can do this. This is the way we can do this together. I'm going to put together a program to train the trainers. And I think that that will help the industry at large. So um, it'll get everybody out of the pitchfall thing. I don't want that happening so much anymore. I want quality coaching, low fees for it, and an opportunity to know that the people that are coaching you will be top notch and understand you and understand the philosophy behind it and understand how to dissect what it is that you're doing or throw out really neat ideas. So that's what's going on. Now on my fivestartalentandproductions.net website, if you go to the services, go scroll down a little bit, hit the get real submissions, that's where you'll see all the instructions about how to do it. Um, it's got a, a space now where it says log in. If you hit log in, you can make a member profile. Make a member profile, put that up there with you in it, and you'll be a member of my website. And it's almost, it almost looks like Facebook. <laughs> it's like a mini Facebook. I have a mini Facebook of my very young. Um, but then you can populate it with the pictures you want me to see of you or a video of your runway walk. And then I can get an idea of, of what your submission is like and who you are and what your um, path has been. Now, I'm going to take the pictures that, from the people that go in and become members on my five star talent and productions.net website, and I'm going to put them into one gallery. The gallery should be shared with your friends. I want people that get lots of likes. So share the gallery picture, tell people to like your picture. Um, that's gonna be part of the judging selection. I'm not gonna do all the judging myself either. I'm gonna ask a panel of, of some of my closest and dearest friends to help me choose. Um, but, that's where you'd start. Make the member profile, populate it with some things that I should look at. After the end of the first round of judging, we're gonna pick from everyone that submits who should go on to the next round of judging. The next round of judging, I need an essay from you explaining your path, explaining what you've tried to do, explaining, um, and, and you know, it, it might be a short story. It might not be all that much stuff and that's okay but I'm really kind of trying to focus in on people that um, had gotten discouraged along the way in some way, shape or form, that might've hit a wall, that might've hit a brick um, where they couldn't move forward. And, and I want to try and help those people. I want people that are really worthy of this and people that really have the ambition to do something with the opportunity that I'm going to give them. I do not want to give an opportunity to someone who else would, who would squander an opportunity. I'm using my opportunities and I'm not going to squander them. I wanna give this to somebody else who's not going to squander the opportunity. So um, there will be an essay. Following the essay, there will be a follow-up interview. And from those things, the submitted materials, the likes, the essay, the interview, that's how I'm going to pick the five people. So yes, it is a process. Um, it wouldn't take that much time, truly. And you know, you never know what could come of it at all. You know, it certainly is a way to get to talk to me and meet me and see if I'm somebody that you might want to sign with and get us to work together. And then after that's done, you'll have some really neat video of yourself walking and posing and learning that you could certainly put towards your marketing materials. Absolutely share them with you. Absolutely. So, um, hey, we can't, can't do a video about how to teach somebody to pose without taking some pictures of them either. So that would have to happen. So there's all sorts of perks in being one of the five people that I would choose to do this. Um, right now, I know I've told everyone I'm starting my acting program again next week, starting on Monday. So that's Monday the 6th if you wanted to do acting coaching with me. And um, the, the acting judging for this particular program um, isn't going to start until the end of July. So I'm doing models for July, actors for August. If you happen to already be in the program, in my, in my Get Real program and planning on signing up, if you're one of the five that has chosen to do um, the video and be my example talent, then your last payment, if you did the three payment plan, your last payment would be forgiven. So you would still get the $200 bonus. So that's what I'm doing. I'm doing this giveaway. I wanted to help people. I wanted to move them forward. I want to propel the business forward. I want to create a program to co coach coaches and I need some talent to help me to do that. So that's my exciting, my exciting 
announcement. Um, this is my contest. This is my giveaway. This is my um, thing to promote everybody and everything and make it all just a little bit better while we have the time to do so before the whole world opens up again. When the whole world opens up again, it would be amazing if everybody was just chugging forward and, and rising up and being an incredible talent and an incredible example. So thank you, Cynthia, for saying it's a great idea. Um, you know, I, I have to brainstorm. I have to think about what can we do? What can we do? And there's been a lot about this business that has bothered me for a very long time. And I know if you watched my, my first episode in the pitch ball thing, it's like I, I got all emotional. I practically cried. Did I cry? I might have cried. I don't know. There's something. But I did. I got upset because it's really been a part of what I've watched my entire lifetime. I've watched people try and run companies um, that had good work ethics and, and really great hearts, but they weren't treated like they should have been by other people because they were prejudged based on this business, based on this industry. And then I've watched other people that, that struggled as being career extras for their entire life because they were scared of coaches because of other companies, because of this industry. And it's not right. Um, there's people walking runways who are putting in a whole bunch of hip swing and, and pigeon-toed feet, and everybody knows I hate pigeon-toed feet, and that's happening, and that's limiting their ability, but everybody's applauding them. No, that's not selling the clothing. It's selling your modeling. And it isn't even real modeling. It was, the runway's not there for you to show off. The runway's there for you to show off the clothes. But nobody's telling anybody that. They're all just applauding bad runway. So this isn't okay. Bad photography is not okay. Bad runway is not okay. It's going to limit your ability to move forward. If you want to progress and you want to reach the highest levels of where you should be, then you need an excellent coach. Well, I want to make excellent coaches. I want to um, clone myself and spread it out all across the country. So if you happen to know people who have been discouraged by the pitchfalls in the past and it put the brakes on and it made it so that their kids couldn't do anything or they couldn't do anything, if that has happened to someone you know or if that happens to be you, then I encourage you to apply to be one of my example talents. I would love to have you here and pull you out of that pitchfall. I would love to. If you know of someone that you think is a really excellent candidate for wanting to be a coach, if you know someone who um, likes to be a mentor to others, that likes to give instruction and likes to, um, it's almost like, it's almost, it's, it's mentoring, it's almost motherly. It's, it's um, trying to inspire, trying to encourage, trying to um, fine tune, if you know someone that's like that, that you think would be an excellent coach, um, there's a lot of coaching programs going on right now. There's, there's you know, life coaching, and they're coaching the life coaches. Um, there's a lot of that kind of stuff going on. Master classes, um, trying to coach trainers, people that are learning to be personal trainers from trainers, people that are learning computers from computer people. It's, it's IT tech, I should probably say, right? I'm obviously not that techy, but, Everybody wants to learn from the top people. So yes, this is, this is, I think, the new wave of what should be happening. I think that the coaches need real coaching because I know some of those other companies, they, they see the best person in their class, they elevate them to giving them a job in the school as a coach, and then they hand them this big binder manual thing and say, here you go. And that's pretty much it. They have to go through and read the examples and read the exercises and tell the class to do these things and give them a handout and go over the handout. All of that stuff happens, but when it comes to truly critiquing the walks and the poses and the monologues or the commercials or all of those things that people are learning, they don't know how to do that. They don't know how to dissect the posture. They don't know how to tell somebody to stop, how to how to not clench their fists up as they're walking down the runway, or how to how to stop their head from tilting. How to how to get those things, those tweaks, those fine tunes, figured out so that people can look like what's being hired in the major markets as talent. So, that's what I'm here wanting to do. Um, share this video. Invite people to the group. I will be posting the link to that page on my um, Five Star Talent and Productions website so that 
you can share that with people, um, explain to them what the program is all about. I know it's, it's like, go ahead, try to regurgitate me. No, share my video so you don't have to regurgitate me. I talk too much for you to try to even spread what I'm saying without just spreading the video. Let people know that that's what I'm planning to do and, and that I'd love to have people who want to be my example talent. So let the submissions begin. I think it would be fabulous. I want people that have a great personality. I don't want people that are just gonna stand there or, or not you know, be able to, to joke and laugh and have a good time. I want it to be a very entertaining um, training system. So that's kind of what I'm looking for, a lot of personality. Um, no, you don't have to be perfect model height. Um, we are gonna deal with some petite people. We are gonna deal with some different sizes. We are gonna deal with um, all different kinds. So um, age five and up, I'm looking for. And um, once, the, once the models have done their submission, I need photos, I need to see your walk. Um, once the models have done their submissions, then starting next month, I'll be taking actors. So in the meantime, if you don't have a monologue, this gives you some time to try and get yourself a monologue together. I would like to see a comedy, I would like to see a drama, and I need to see a headshot. So that's what I will need from actors a month from now, starting um, August 1st. So that's my plan. That's what I'm up to. It's a totally new idea for me. Um, but I think that this way we can have one hand wash the other and we can start um, a cycle of excellence. And that's what I'm looking to do. So I hope that that sounds, I don't know, feasible. I hope that that sounds like a good thing. I hope that that is coming across um, in the manner that it's intended, that it's, it's about, I just want to give. So, um, whoever's in, who wants to join me, I would love to have you. Okay, that's what I'm all excited about. That's what I'm all hyped up about. And yes, we've all been stuck in quarantine forever. And maybe this whole brainstorm came because I've been stuck in quarantine. But I'm staying home. I'm not going to get sick. I'm staying home. And while I'm home, I'm thinking of ways that I can take care of the talent. And I'm thinking of ways that I can take care of um, the creatives. And, and those who also want to join me in a fantastic career. Um, being a coach has been a fantastic career. And now, you know, I'm moving into booking people and, and booking people is fun too. So I'm kind of trying to let some of the coaching go, but I don't want to let it go and I don't have good hands to put you in. So I want to start training the trainers. Um, but it is a wonderful job. And what's really, really cool about being an acting or modeling coach is that it is so uplifting to others. It does do this amazing confidence building thing that it, it bleeds over into the other things that they do in their life. So whether or not they ever end up actually working as a working talent or whether they just end up better at public speaking for their job or whether they end up um, just being able to be more inspiring, whether, it's, whether that's inspiring to their own children later, um, the more confident and comfortable people are in many ways, um, the more they are able to make better choices in their lives, whether it's a better job, whether it's a better education, whether it's um, a better relationship with their spouse, this industry affects people in a way that is, is sweeping. It's all encompassing when it comes to what it does to people's lives. And, and I think that the, the confidence building is a really, really strong reward. Um, it's also incredibly rewarding to watch one of your talent as they're, you know, on a, on a sitcom or in a movie or um, just doing what they love and you know you helped put them there. That's a really, really rewarding thing. And yes, it helps to get paid to do something that rewarding. Um, but I know that, that when, I, when I'm done coaching at night, when I'm done and I shut everything down and I, I walk away from it or I close the door on my office, whatever it is that I'm doing, I feel so pumped up. I feel excited. I feel like I've done something good for somebody else. And that's amazing. It's an amazing feeling. And to know that, that they're benefiting and that they're growing and that they're changing and that they're adapting into someone with a higher skill level is, it's incredible. And I don't know why anyone wouldn't want my job. Everybody should want my job. My job is so fun. And 
I am planning for the people that coach with me to be coaches, um, providing them with support so that they are capable of opening their own companies, so that they're, they have um, scripts that they can use and exercises that they can use and all sorts of different ways to have my support in how to find people to help coach, how to um, structure their program, how to find um, connections to make for those people that they've coached after the fact. So my program will include all of those different levels of support for people that want to learn to coach talent. So that's the plan. Um, but it all starts with you guys. So you're the, you're the talent that's out there right now. So um, if you feel like you're not at entry level and you don't think you should apply for this because you're not at entry level, that's fine too. Rack your brain. Find, think of somebody everybody knows somebody who has a cute kid that probably went to one of these things and they got chosen but they ended up not able to move forward somebody's out there that you probably know who went through this let them know about what i'm doing let them know about the website link that i'm going to share and share it with them so that the people that really truly need my help in getting started can use this opportunity and not have it squandered so um i'm excited I'm excited. I hope everybody else is excited too. I just thought this was like such a neat thing to do. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for being one of my Get Real members. Um, I know I didn't have homework during this episode. Um, I did put a thing up there on, on the site earlier this week asking how many of my videos have people actually watched. And I've noticed it's been like Somebody said, oh, I watched one, I watched a half of one, I watched two. Um, just so you guys know, the program itself started with a four day, um, I, I did a Monday through Thursday thing. And so episodes, units one through four, um, were that program, that complete program right there. So if you're starting with you know, this one, episode 13, then you're really missing out on how this all began and how this has grown. And I highly recommend um, going down through the group, finding the YouTube link, I might repost it again, and go to the beginning of the program and start with those units. Start with one, two, three, four, five. They're all on there. Um, and the ones that aren't are on this group. So I highly recommend starting there. There's um, workbooks for every other, every other episode but this one. So touch into those two. They're great note-taking things. Um, shut down you know, every other tab on your computer. Spend some time, listen to them, grow from them, utilize the information. You've got time right now. Everybody does. So do that and get caught up and catch up with, with this because um, this certainly won't be my last <laughs> webinar. I'm enjoying going live too much. So that will continue, um, but catch up. Everybody catch up. I'd love to see you finish them all, unless you get totally sick of listening to my voice. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. But um, I hope you enjoy. I hope you're, you're enjoying this so far. I would love to um, grow this group. I would love to have lots of people involved. Um, and as it grows, you know, keep spreading this sort of message. Keep saving people thousands of dollars. I would like to keep... Um, making sure that people know that they do have options of how to do things with quality. I would like for people that are just doing theater and, and have always done theater to understand there is another way to get into the business that they really wanted to get into, but got stuck doing theater. Well, now theater's on hiatus. So while theater's on hiatus, those people that felt like they were stuck doing theater and had no other opportunity, they should be here. They should be with us. So spread the word, have your friends join, Check, have them check out this video, have them look at the website and, and apply. Anyway, I think I've said all I need to say. I'm so glad that you joined me. I know it was a little earlier today than I usually do these. Um, I've got a busy night ahead of me, but I wanted to jump on anyway, because I didn't want to wait. I know everybody's got the 4th of July coming up. I'm very, very excited about having everybody spend that kind of time. Just social distance, okay? You're your product, you're what you're selling. Stay safe, please, please. So that we can all get back to work a little faster. Anyway, oh, Cynthia, you're on, you're on number four. Great, cool. 
<laughs> keep it going. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for joining me and I will see you next time. Take care.